Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a rundown of the various RTX 2080 Ti PCBs. Um, well, not really a rundown, just kind of, I'm going to point out the ones that I think are worth uh, considering. Um, so yeah, because unfortunately the RTX 2080 Ti PCBs, they're very... It's a lot of the same thing over and over again, as far as I'm concerned, which is why I've gotten really tired of looking at RTX 2080 Ti's relatively quickly, because it's just like, the cards are, like, it's basically just the same thing with slight, like, layout differences. There's not really anything all that new or interesting between any of the cards, at least the cards that you can like regularly buy. This video is brought to you by us and the Disappointment PC t-shirt. A great way to support Gamers Nexus and to commemorate a year of despair is to wear a constant reminder of your disappointment. The GN Disappointment t-shirt features release dates for major milestones like Spectre and Meltdown, the CTS Labs report, and RAM prices accompanied by an artifacted design that matches the infamous XD failure mode on new video cards. The shirts are high quality fabrics and prints and are available in soft 100% cotton for a comfortable fit or available in a popular tri-blend. Visit store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below to grab one now starting at $19.99. There is cards like the Galax Hall of Fame card, uh, which was really, really cool. But unfortunately, um, they made a hundred of those, which that's the extreme overclocking version. And uh, they, they made only a hundred of those. I'm not sure if there's like a cut down consumer version. There probably is, but it's cut down. So everything that made the extreme overclocking version cool isn't on the consumer version. So it's just like, oh, well, <laughs> that's not, you know, that that's just boring as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, um, on the uh, on the other like the other cards are just like the cards that are currently available because there are car interesting cards coming out like there's going to be a 2080 Ti Kingpin edition, um, but ultimately I don't think that one's going to be a whole lot better on air cooling or water cooling than just your other like than any of the other cards. It's, that one's really geared for extreme overclocking. And then there's going to be a lightning from MSI, but I'm not sure what exactly they plan to do with that. Historically, a lightning should be great for extreme overclocking. But considering how NVIDIA has just been like, just like NVIDIA is just ruining extreme overclocking support. Um, I don't think MSI will be allowed to do quite as much with the lightning as they would like to, or if they like, it might be really half hearted because that's what I thought, think happened kind of with the 1080 Ti. Like it was a lightning. It just wasn't. It, it didn't seem to be on the same level as some of the past lightnings that, you know, came before the, the 10 series. So, yeah. Um, so those cards are like, you know, th those are cards that exist, but unfortunately you can't really buy them right now. So we're just going to look at cards that are available or at least PCBs that are available, not the full cards. Um, I don't know how the heat sinks perform. You should probably ask Steve about that, not me. Uh, I just get sent pictures of PCBs so I can figure out what components are on them and if said components are good or not. So then, starting off with uh, the Founders Edition PCB, which is extremely common, okay? Like, th this is one of those things, like, that's a Founders Edition card, and that uses the Founders Edition PCB. Guess what this card uses? You save a lot of money if you buy this thing, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm in the UK, that's why this is in pounds. So... This is still a Founders Edition PCB. This is also a Founders Edition PCB. That's a Founders Edition. That's also a Founders Edition. Also, 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 not sure. I think this is probably a Founders Edition, but with Asus, I'm never quite sure because uh, even for like low-end cards, Asus, for some reason, makes custom PCBs. I'm not sure. I guess they have a... Uh, I guess they have more manufacturing capacity than they know what to do with for, for actual boards. So they actually just manufacture their custom cards even for low end, uh, even for their low end GPUs. So I'm not a hundred percent certain that this is a Founders Edition. It probably is, but I'm not gonna say it definitely is because I don't know um, with a hundred percent certainty. Next we have this thing, which is a Founders Edition, another Founders Edition Asus card. So I'm not sure. This is almost certainly yes another Founders Edition, and then we have another Asus card where I'm not sure. Now here we have the Zotac Amp Extreme, which is like the first custom card. And the thing is, it's like, here, here's the problem with the RTX 2080 Ti custom cards. Um, you basically, all of them, 
right, excluding the MSI Gaming X, is you get 16 power stages running in either 8 or 10 phase mode, and this applies even to the extreme overclocking cards, though I'm not sure about the Kingpin edition, I'm pretty sure, and the Lightning, though I think the Lightning is a 16 phase, I've not managed to find, like, uh, like I'm pretty sure the Lightning's a 16 phase, I mean 16 power stage card, because none of them actually run doublers, none of the phases are out of phase with each other, so basically, and that includes the Founders Edition. The Founders Edition runs an eight-phase voltage controller in eight-phase mode, and they basically have this weird asymmetrical phase setup, um, which which works. But uh, and the reason why Nvidia has gone for it with the the thirteen, like Nvidia's reference card is thirteen power stages, and the whole point of doing that is that those seventy amp power stages hit peak efficiency for the kind of current an RTX twenty eighty Ti uh, would uh, put out. Uh, well, pull at stock settings if you have 13 of them. So basically the reference card is optimized for peak efficiency at stock settings and a little bit of overclocking. Like it's not, it, it doesn't uh, get significantly less efficient as you overclock, but definitely some of the other cards out there uh, have some advantages the further, like start getting, like getting bigger and bigger advantages the higher you push your core clock, uh, the higher you push your power consumption. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of that, but ultimately everything's like there. Most of the cards are eight phase, um, and the Zotac card is no difference. The main difference with the Zotac card is that they have four phase memory power, but that's just like it's not going to do anything. It's like I, I'm not sure. I, well, I know exactly why Zotac did it. Zotac wants to be able to claim that they have the most phases out of any RTX 2080 Ti manufacturer out there, which they technically do. But that extra phase they tacked on um is uh is on the memory it doesn't do anything so and and they don't have the most true phases because they still use the up9512 voltage controller uh which runs in eight phase mode so yeah it's basically just like so that's an eight plus four phase that they they have um and they do run the 16 power stages and then four power stages for the memory power so you know, it's ever so slightly better memory, like it's slightly better vCore VRM than the refer than the Founders Edition, slightly better memory VRM than the Founders Edition, but not to an extent that I would actually care, right? Like it's not going to make a difference in your uh, in overclocking on Ambient. It's probably not even going to make a di over uh, difference in overclocking on LN2. Now then, uh, moving on to a card that is actually interesting as far as I'm concerned, uh, we have the ROG Strix, and we're just going to look at it on Asus's own website. So the reason why I like the Strix, and I was hoping for bigger pictures. Yeah, okay, that's great. <laughs> um, but uh, the reason why I like the Strix PCV is very, very simple. So you get a BIOS switch which is, in my opinion, with an RTX 2080 Ti, that's like the most innovative feature on any of these cards because there's like two of them that I'm aware of that have BIOS switches. And so that's the FTW3 and the Strix. Now, where the Strix differs from the a lot of the other cards is that the Strix actually chooses to intentionally use the MP2888 voltage controller. And the th reason why they did that is that controller supports 10 phases. And it's running in 10 phase mode, so this is one of the few, like this and the Galax Hall of Fame are the only cards I'm currently aware of that run 10 phase, that have the VRM as a, as a 10 phase for vCore, which is really, really cool. It still has 16 power stages, but Asus upgraded the power stages. They're actually 70 amp power stages from Texas Instruments, not from Fairchild Semiconductor, and these are CSD 95480s. Uh, and they're ever so, they're, well, they're a bit more efficient than the FDMF 3170s, uh, that everybody else is using, like literally everybody else is using the the Fairchild semiconductor parts, um, and so essentially Asus has a slightly more efficient VRM. They have slightly more phases than every. Uh, they have like two phases more than everybody else, and also they have much more output capacitance than anybody else. It is worth noting that I don't think that actually makes a difference. Like all of those advantages that Asus has in their VRM, uh, in day to day overclocking, I don't think you'll notice. If you were on liquid nitrogen, you might, um, but probably won't. So yeah, but ultimately because of all the little, like Asus like at least tried to do something to make the PCB a bit better. And so I actually like, because of that, I like the 2080 Ti uh, Strix PCB quite a lot because it has the, like it's not a huge difference, but it does have the best VRM. Um, and it has a BIOS switch, and that's the, kind of the end of the story for why I like this PCB. Um, 
Next, there's of course the, like a lot of people obviously want to know about the MSI card because hey, it has a six pin. Everybody else only has two eight pins. Well, the thing is, um, MSI is on a 14 power stage setup, eight phase VRM. So this is basically as close to the founder's edition as you can be in terms of your VR, uh, in terms of your VRM uh, as possible without uh, being a founder's edition. Like they've added one phase to the V-Core. I mean, not even one phase, they added one power stage. There's 14 power stages instead of 13. They still use a UP9512 and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the end of that for the VRM. Now where the big differences between the, the MSI card and the founder's edition are, is that MSI removed a whole bunch of current balancing circuitry. Um, and I assume that's because they have more power connectors, so they're not as power constrained. Like basically, like it's not an issue of the power connector not handling the power. It's an issue of NVIDIA's ridiculously strict software power limits. They just won't let anybody make a card with an 800 watt power limit in the BIOS. So if you don't want the card power throttling when you max out one of your power connectors, uh, you need to have some power balancing circuitry. But since MSI has more power connectors than everybody else, they can cut back on the power balancing circuitry because it's less likely that you're going to max out an 8-pin and another 8-pin and a 6-pin um, if you still stay within like the regular NVIDIA power limits. So that, that's kind of what they opted for there. They also have fuses on the power connectors, which I don't think do a whole lot because generally speak, like the the scenario where I could really expect those fuses to blow is if like one of your power stages shorted, like shorted, like die failed closed, where it shorts the 12 volts to the output of the VRM. And the thing is, I doubt that that fuse is going to blow faster than the GPU core is going to die when exposed to steadily rising voltage. It really doesn't take a lot of voltage to quickly kill a, you know, like silicon. Like it, you you can basically just brush against like like if the core voltage blips to say 2.5 volts for, you know, a microsecond, that chip is dead. And if the fuse doesn't blow up before that happens, the chip is dead. And so I don't think the fuses are all actually all that useful. Um, and if anything, if you were trying to do extreme overclocking, I think they'd get in the way because uh, you might blow them up while just pushing regular amounts of power. So yeah, that that's kind of like, that's basically why I don't really like this, this card where it's just like, uh, like PCB wise, I don't like it. I don't know about the cooler. The cooler might be great. And if the cooler is great, then a good reason to get it would be the cooler. But as far as the PCB goes, it's basically a founder's edition with an extra power connector. Oh, and some fuses that might not do a whole lot if you actually like have a short circuit on the card. So yeah, um, but that is the Gaming X Trio. Uh, next we have the EVGA FTW3. Which, uh, what do you get with an FTW3? Well, you get a BIOS switch and you get the same 16 power stage, eight phase VRM that you get on like, uh, say this gigabyte card right here. Um, so yeah, basically everything I say VRM wise about the FTW3 is also true for the extreme card here, as well as the extreme water force from gigabyte. They do have a version of the 2080 Ti, which comes with a water block. Um, and that is just like, it's 16 power stages, runs in eight phase mode, uses a UP9512, um, and, uh, what else is there? Oh yeah. The, the my, one minor difference is that gigabyte uses much smaller power inductors than everybody else, but I don't think that's actually going to make a difference unless you're doing extreme overclocking. And even there, I'm not sure because I don't know the spec of the parts that gigabyte is using. They're just suspiciously small. Um, not that that would be an issue on ambient cooling. It's just like, if you tried to push say 500 Watts through the, I mean, 500 amps through the VRM, uh, they might be an issue might. Um, probably won't be, but could be, because everybody else is using larger parts. And generally with inductors, the the size of them uh, kind of has a big role to play with how much current they can, they can handle. But yeah, so VRM-wise, the, the FTW3 basically takes the... Well, the FTW3's VRM actually uses the same inductors as what you would find on the Founders Edition. And uh, they basically tack on three extra power stages, still running eight-phase mode, and they add a BIOS switch. So basically, um, if you're gonna be buying a card for sort of overclocking features, I'd say FTW3 or Strix, whichever one is cheaper, right? If you just want the BIOS switch, just buy whichever one's cheaper. And 
if you want a card for like water cooling, just buy the cheapest thing you can find that has a Founders Edition PCB. And probably you might want to check with the manufacturer of said card if they're okay with you replacing the heatsink, right? Um, so when, when you swap it over to the water block, because some of them apparently aren't okay with that, but... Yeah, um, that that is that is all the RTX 2080 Ti PCBs. There's really not that much to them. I mean, you know, there, there's two different voltage controllers that you'll encounter across all the cards, except like the Hall of Fame. That one had a special one, but um, you can't buy that card, as far as I'm aware. So <laughs> it's not relevant to the to, to the the discussion here. And um, yeah, Strix has the best like VRM out of the cards that you can buy. FTW3 is the next, like, the, the other option to the Strix just because it has the BIOS switch. Um, this doesn't, like, the extra 6-pin, in my opinion, here doesn't make any sense, doesn't do a whole lot. And if you want water cooling, get a Founders Edition. Um, so, yeah, that is it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe if you'd like to support Gamers Nexus. We have a Patreon. There's also store.gamersnexus.net. Uh, gamers where you can uh, buy things like shirts, mod mats, mouse pads. Um, I think there was even some kind of gla like glasses as well. So for drinking out of. Um, so yeah, you can find all of that. And that obviously helps immensely with the channel. And uh, other than that, I have a channel called Actually Hardcore Overclocking, where I do other overclocking related content. So if you'd like to check that out, that would be awesome. Thank you for watching and goodbye.